Hello, Rough Rider Nation, and welcome to this edition of the Rider Report, the ins and outs of Yavapai College Athletics. I'm joined today by Ryan Kogel, our head baseball coach. Ryan, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Now, you've had quite a summer. You've had a busy summer. Obviously, you've been some re- doing some recruiting, but you just recently got back from uh, being on the staff of the NJCAA All-Stars that just finished second at the NBC World Series, mm-hmm. the 84th NBC World Series. It's the best finish that an NJCAA team has had since they've been competing in the World Series. Tell us first off, what is the NBC World Series? Yeah, it's a good place to start. Uh, it's the oldest collegiate tournament in the country. 80, don't quote me, 85 some years. 84th, I guess. 84. 84th year. Um, that goes back a ways. And Roger Clemens, Chipper Jones, there's some huge names. I'm missing 100 probably. But basically you take the top summer collegiate teams, which are comprised of summer collegiate league champions, you pull them all together into a tournament. The national team, uh, NJCA national team, sends uh, a JUCO team there every two years to compete. And we're fortunate enough to get a direct bid into pool play. But uh, long story short, it is some of the best baseball in the country, excluding Northwoods, uh, Cape Cod League, something like that. But uh, it's really good baseball. So you were, you were selected to be on the staff. How, how did that come about? Uh, yeah, it just kind of, honestly, Brad, happened out of the blue. Doug Wren, the head coach of the JUCO national team, uh, I was fortunate enough to get to know him a little bit at the 2016 Coaches Convention where we sat on uh, stage with the National Coach of the Year Award. And he's a younger coach, uh, similar to my age, just hit it off, had a lot in common. Uh, he's won a national championship 14, 15, 16, and 17, runner-up in 18. So to get a phone call from him and say, hey, I'd like you to join my staff, it was kind of like, um, you know, kind of you don't know what to say. You want to say yes, right. uh, but you're kind of like, what's going on, man? Why are you asking me? Right, right. Uh, but he's extremely fortunate. The reason I was on that staff is because of Doug, so I, I thank him a lot. That's 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 super neat. So so it was quite an experience. Now let me just run through. So you in pl- pool play, you guys went two and one, uh, and and that put you put you into the single elimination tournament from there. Yeah. And yeah. then and then where you you played two, three good teams. The first team you beat was Colorado Cyclones, and they were 3-0 and in pull play. Yeah. You beat them 9-8. to The next night you beat uh, previously unbeaten Wellington Heat 7-3, to yeah. and that puts you into the championship game against Santa Barbara. And and then tell us about the, tell us about well, that and then, and then go to the championship yeah. game because that was quite so a championship game. The ironic thing is these teams are all teams that I've sent players to because they're good programs. I want my players to be around good programs in the summer. Wellington Heat, for example, we beat them in the semifinal game, and Rick Twyman does a good job there. And I thought, let's send a bunch of players to Rick, and he'll continue that vibe of winning and what it takes, and here we are playing against them. So you don't know what to expect from a lot of these teams, but you know they're going to be good. Um, We were down scoreboard-wise in every single game we played at some point. I think we had a walk-off win. Um, You know better than me, but – I think we had two ninth inning comebacks or three. Right. I think we came back from like a three run deficit in the ninth inning twice. Right. So it, to me, it just epitomized junior college baseball. And I, JUCO people will understand that. Non JUCO people will, well, what are you talking about? And it's kind of this blue collar underdog show up, tuck the brim of your hat down, and just go out and play, whether you're in a parking lot, a dusty field, or an uh, 8,000 seat stadium. And our guys showed up acting like all-stars, which they should have. And by the end of it, they acted like just dirtbag Juco, go out and try to fight and <laughs> win together. And that was part of the experience that was so awesome to see. So let's go through the championship game because I think that epitomizes what you just said. You're down, what, 5-2 to two going into the ninth inning. You guys tied up. Yeah. So the Foresters, Santa Barbara Foresters, we've had players play in that program. They're perennially the best uh, in that tournament. I think they've won it eight or nine times. Um, they ran out a lefty that was 91 miles an hour, 92 miles an hour, and right away, you know, you got your hands full. Uh, we went down early. They brought in another right-hander that was about 95, and then you go, okay, this one may not be written out for it real well. <laughs> um, we just scratched and fight and clawed and tied it up in the ninth with some walks, some quality at bats, just grinding out. And the coolest part of all this is if you were to ask me, like, who was the best player and, you know, how did Tommy do? It's like, I don't know. 
it was 25 individuals came together, and I don't know the best player. It was just a bunch of guys going out and competing. And the USA on the chest, they all bought into that, and let's do it for something bigger than ourselves. And that's awesome to see in a matter of five days that develop because right. we were together for five days before that tournament. Right, right. How, so you, you talked a little bit about Tommy. Tommy made the team, and, and he had a nice tournament. Tommy was awesome. Um, I was part of the reason that uh, I wanted to do this was to try to get one of our guys on the team, and, and you know would love to have a freshman on the team so he can come back and bring that experience with him. Tommy epitomized JUCO. I mean, he's not the fastest. He's not. He doesn't hit it the farthest. He doesn't throw it the hardest. But when you're in a one game winner go home, that's a dude that you want in the foxhole with you. Quality at bats, good defense sparked us with some stolen bases so ultimately uh, i think he cares about baseball more than he did going into that tournament uh, not just baseball but what it represents so i was just thrilled for him his family to be able to experience that and he wasn't the only arizona kid with him mean, obviously he's no we had a representative from cochise uh representative from arizona western and then paradise valley so watching some of those arizona guys go about it and you're sitting there going you know, could have could have fought for ten or twelve Arizona guys. I felt like, right, but right. to be fair with everyone else, I mean, they're, everyone deserved to be on that team. But those Arizona guys represented the conference, the region, extremely well. So it was really cool to see, just having a lot of pride in Arizona. That's neat. What an experience. What a great yep. experience. Uh, way to represent you by college. We appreciate that. Well, you came back and there's a big hole in the field. <laughs> oh, <laughs> tell, yeah. tell us about the big hole in the field. Yeah. No. I mean, it's. It is what it is. I mean, we've had a drainage flooding issue for years. It's finally gotten pretty intense, and the school fortunately um, has really kind of taken it among themselves to fix it permanently. So with that comes a little, um, you know, you give a little to get a lot. So part of that for my own psyche selfishness was probably good for me to get away for 19 days. Um, when I came back, the amount of work that they'd had done was tremendous it's organized it's efficient it's like watching a ballet of caterpillars down there yeah machines um, I hear they're ahead of schedule so I think we'll get sod laid whenever it's uh, whenever the weather's warm so our players will show up to a dirt hole in the ground but uh, I think they're all under the same page they will be on Sunday that it's for their own best interest and the facility they'll be able to take some pride in it'll be awesome indeed now, uh, just just so we we can picture this, I guess, but there was a there was a huge gaping canyon uh, built through the through the middle yeah, of that so to, to put ten big ten twenty foot, I don't know what the size are ten foot uh, pipes in to, yeah. to help with the drainage. For people that don't know, there's a basically a creek that runs to and under our field and drains out underneath it, and just over time, Mother Nature has kind of crushed that culvert. It literally flows right through the middle of the field uh, underneath it. So in order to get that culvert out, you have to rip up baseball field. Um, the, the magnitude of what they're doing is you can't explain it. You have mm. to see it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just been incredibly impressive to see the organization of it. So you sleep a little better at night. You don't sleep well because it's your baby, but you sleep better at night knowing they're taking care of it. I know that the, the original deadline was around November. Hopefully the weather would cooperate with us. Uh, uh, we were hoping to get sawed in by November to be ready for the season in January, uh, but it looks like that's a little ahead of a schedule, and we'll, we'll possibly, we will get sawed in in time for it to take for the season. Well, the great thing, too, you know, whether it happens September 1st or 10th or whatever, the city of Prescott, Prescott High School have been awesome. Uh, we get to go use a facility that we can get on the field and, and practice. We get to go to Prescott High School, and uh, Coach Winslow does a great job with his field, so you actually have a nice facility to compete, a safe facility. Um, and, hey, at the end of the day, I'm ready for a little something different, so it re-energizes, kind of rejuvenates our practice plans and changes it up for players, keeps them fresh. But ultimately, the goal of the fall is to develop and start that process towards winning and uh, we will certainly do that, be able to do that. So let, let's get back then to baseball a little bit. So we, we, you, you went and did that thing you, uh, with the NBC mm -hmm. World Series. We've got the hole in the, the, the field. Uh, you had to do some work in the summer. How's recruiting going? Recruiting's never ending for, for JUCO baseball. Yeah, no, I feel like uh, we should always 
like post date these interviews to update recruiting. Right. You wait three days <laughs> and you just think you have you a great class yeah. and it's different. You think you got a struggle class and you wait three days, you get a great surprise. So we've had some bad surprises and some awesome surprises. And that sounds like every other year. So ultimately your recruiting goal is to get the players on the field that help you run a program the way you want on and off the field and to win games. You gotta have good players to do that. You gotta have good people to do that, good students to do that. So we have that. I am doing cartwheels with excitement, getting ready to get going with this group. Good. We've got uh, ten games, ten games in the fall, uh, and that will begin first day, first games. First games in the fall will be the first weekend in September. First weekend in September, that'll be at. It's Prescott actually the second weekend of September, second full weekend. Okay, and that'll be at Prescott High School. Correct. Uh, look on our website for those dates, and uh, uh, we're looking forward. Congratulations this summer, and welcome back. Thank you. Well, we want to we want to remind you to get your Rough Rider news at www.goroughriders.com. Check the baseball website for uh, the schedule for this fall and also for the upcoming spring. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter. Be sure to follow us on Facebook. And as always, go Rough Riders. <laughs>